Pay phone that will be back. Streets raise me. So, who do you make music for? When you're creating music, who's who's in mind? Are you making it for yourself? Are you making it for local? Are you making it for something more global? Who do you make music for? I would say internally me first. I have to do it for me before I do it for anybody. So I'm on some Andre 3000 shit. I'm always, you know, trying to outdo my last verse or whatever. So it will be me initially, unless I'm getting on somebody else's song or, you know, there's a concept to it. I got sent a message or, you know, it be, it still be for me, but it could be for somebody else, but mainly me. I'm always trying to outdo my last verse. Even if I dumb a verse down, I'm still trying to outdo my last verse. Cause I can have some incredibly hard stuff. I can have some, what I call, you know, lukewarm shit. Or I can have cold shit. Cold shit and hot shit is the same thing these days. So it's like pick your poison according to the beat. So, so when you say dumb it down, elaborate a little more on that. Do you feel like your rhymes are going over people's heads, like I, like a Rock Him or KRS or Early Nas? Like people won't get it for so too long. Are you dumbing it down, or do you just yeah, think it's just yeah, too long? I, I use a lot of big words because you know a lot of my guys are very intelligent. But they get it, but I got to dumb it down for the dummy. And no disrespect to them, but. You know, they got like limited vocabularies. The average cat only know about 60 words, and 20 of them is cursive. 10 of that, 10, 10 out of the 60 is slang, so you left with 30 words. So would it be safe to say what you dumbing it down is probably focusing more on melody and the concept of the song versus being lyrical the Most way definitely. some people like lyrical? Most definitely. It'd be the way the song is going and the beat. Like the beat controls mostly everything for me. Unless I already wrote the joint and the cat come with a beat and they want me to get on it. So you spoke about being on songs with other people. How do you feel about collaborating with people? First, we're gonna start with one person, then we'll move on to, uh, let's say a posse cut or something. How do you feel about people you collab with and what would be an ideal collaboration for you? Not a person per se, but a person's work that work ethic or how they rhyme. What would be an ideal collab I mean, for you with one person? I mean, like when I was really, like really calling myself a rapper, I was in a group. Like when I was down here, I met Jason. We battled when we first met. We battled all night long. And mind you, Jason is one of the, 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 the illest motherfuckers. Jogger, whatever they know him as, Jogger, Spitty Gambini. That's my bro. <laughs> That's my OG G right there. Shout out to Jogger. But that motherfucker was one of the best freestylers off the top of the dome that I've ever met. So battling him was like my toughest challenge. But mind you, I had about maybe 60, 70 verses in the cache because I never was doing those songs. I was just writing verses. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I got into a group with him. He like, yo, fuck, we might as well be a group. So he didn't admit defeat, but he conceded. You feel me? And that's how that's how the Out of Towners was formed. Shout out to Lyft, too, because, you know, we brought him along later. But when we went to New York and you know, we performed in front of Paradise, Paradise called him out. He, he knew we just had put him in the group. And Paradise is the guy that used to do a lot of production for X-Clan, if everybody out there don't know who Paradise is, but shout out to him. And yeah, he called them out like, yeah, y'all just put him in a group. You wrote the hooks. You probably got a bunch of rhymes and he's supposed to be the leader. He really called us out. Mm, the legendary X-Clan. Okay, far as the group, do you have a, a preference when performing in a group? Like, do you want to be the person who starts to rhyme or you more like Ghostface, you're a good cleanup man? How, I, how do you I like the bad cleanup. I like to set shit off too. It don't matter, man. Whatever's best for the song, man. Whatever's best for the song is what we gonna do. You know what I mean? I might be batting DH. Go go right in the middle. I'm a designated hitter. You know what I mean? I mean I'm in the middle. Or I could set it, or I could dead it. It don't matter to me. 
So if you was collaborating with somebody, um, how would you feel about if, let's say, you wanted them on a song, but maybe their rhyme wasn't as good? How do you feel about you writing for them? <sighs> how would they feel about me writing for them is the question. Okay, they're open to it. How do you feel about it? Then it's a done deal. I've so, done it before. And my version of ghostwriting is different. What's your version of ghostwriting? My ghostwriting, my version of ghostwriting is sitting here right with you right now to ask you well. <coughs> Excuse me. What do you want to say? You tell me what you want to say and I'll figure out a way to make it come out slick or make it rhyme with what we're about to say next or, you know what I mean, just really, you know, coming up with glue. Like, words be glue. And what I mean by that is it could be a where, a there, or anything to be the glue to set you up to say the next thing. See, a lot of dudes want to freestyle now. But to me, that's just an excuse to give me some, some subpar product. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody want everything in a rush now, and I understand y'all. Like Wayne said, I don't write shit because I don't got time. But Wayne shit is up to par. Talking about Little Wayne. Yes, we talking about the goat, Lil Wayne. Wheezy. Exactly. Wheezy F. Lil Wheezy F. Wheezy F for you <laughs> niggas. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if your freestyles ain't up to par, why the fuck you calling yourself a freestyle? And a lot of motherfuckers don't write because I don't know why. I don't know why you don't write. Like I said, I've been writing forever, so how am I going to stop writing now? They don't write, and most of them can't write. And if they, like you said, if they feel as though they're freestyling, if they come off subpar or you keep messing up, then you could just dumb it as it I was mean, a freestyle. I, I feel like it's still a gap between my freestyle and writing. It's only one time I felt like I bridged the gap, and then... I used to go to my man Tone. Shout out to Tone. He used to live on Montegalia, right there next to, to where the Goodwill is at. It used to be like four or five apartments right there. In Brooklyn? Studio. Nah, in West Virginia, right here on the West. I don't know that. And uh, Tone, 360, Get Stone Tone, he had a studio over there. And the first time I felt like I bridged the gap between my written and my freestyle, he got locked up. And while he was locked up, I think they said, well, I ain't even gonna say the person who they said broke into his crib and stole his equipment, but he running around putting out a lot of music. He just came home from jail. Shout out to him. I know the guy. I mean, I almost had to do something to him because he called himself Robin J one time, but that's another story. You know what I mean? This story right here is when I was bridging my gap between my written and my freestyle, meaning like you couldn't tell the difference because I was pinning rhymes so quick, it sounded like a freestyle, and the way I was pinning them made them sound like a freestyle, he ends up getting locked up. Mm. And I didn't record again for a while after that. Because remember, I'm the one who found Bob. Everybody used to go to Bob, shout out to Bob. And after Bob, Bob did the first CD of my album, and then Tone did the rest. He did all my skits and he put everything together for me. So Tone was a very, very intricate part of what I was trying to do. And when they robbed this crib, that kind of set me back for a while. So so when you take a pause on music, like when your man got locked up, the equipment got stolen, is it easy for you to jump right back in? Ah, hold on. Just because I took a pause from recording, did you didn't take a pause from writing. Never. I never did that. Okay. Um, here's a shameless plug. We'll be discussing more about MCs and freestyling on episode two of the round table, which will be available in a couple days. Shameless plug. Um, so you just take a pause on recording and just let it kind of build up. It wasn't kind of no pause. This, this is the thing. I hate recording with rappers. I hate rappers that have a studio that want to engineer my rapping. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate that. I don't want no rapper recording my rap. So let me tell you why. Because it's always a secret competition. Nobody want me to sound better than them. Like you think they might not uh, get your levels right or your mic right. Uh, 
I don't think that I know this for a fact. But dudes always want me to come over so they got that that recording of it. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, if I go somewhere else and record it and it come out dope, they'd be like, oh, I had the original version of it over here. You know what I mean? So you feel as though it's biasness if another rapper is recording you when you're rhyming? The only rapper that I never felt that way about was Tone. And Tone was wicked. Young Detroit Red. Whew, that's my guy. You feel me? Shout out to Detroit. Yeah, shout out to Detroit always. Shout out to everywhere. Shout out to everybody. You feel me? But at the same time, it's like, I'm not trying to let no rapper that's on the come up record me while I'm on my come up. Because I'm not coming up. Conflict of interest? Most definitely. Most definitely. So what do you dislike about creating music? Do you have any dislikes when creating music, writing rhymes, anything that might just stop you in your tracks? Like you said, you got a lot of, you know, rhymes with one rhyme, one line, four bars. What what, what do you dislike about creating music? Or do you have any dislikes? Recording and writing music simultaneously, both. I couldn't think of one. No negatives on creating music, writing or recording. Because I, I can't nail down a specific process. What I say is, I keep telling you it's all about the emotion. Well, here, see, well, see, last night when we was, you know, we was enjoying ourselves last night, and the guard played a particular beat, yeah. and you see me go off and hold on, hold, play that again. And, close my eyes and you you see me in one of my my, my blackout mode is what you would call it. I'm a visionary. You know what I'm saying? saying? Right, right. You'll see me in my blackout <laughs> mode but it's like, yeah, I got something that'll go perfect to that. So half the work is already done and that's pretty much how I like to do it. Or sometimes I'll just hear a beat that I like and I don't have anything to it and I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to, to start pinning to that just to see how it sounds. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, I got all these different creative processes. I don't know which one will pop its head up when I hear that beat that grabbed me. You know what I mean? So I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, definitively say, oh, I do it this way, I do it that way because it's mad different ways. It's unorthodox, like OVG. Exactly, but I will tell you that anytime I hear a beat that I like, I'm going to kick a rhyme that I already got. I might already use it. I'm just testing it out to see how that rhyme sounds on me, to me. You know what I mean? So that's that's part of the process, too. So I'm always going to kick something I already know or got memorized just to see how it come off. <coughs> So you're pretty much influenced to write in all aspects of your life, whether you work and cutting hair, cleaning up around the house, hear a beat. Do you ever hear songs that people may put out on the radio or your one str or your one stream you're listening to, and then you say, "Hold up, maybe I should write some." All right, I, I, I tell you a secret. My old lady tell me I should be in the marketing and advertising. Because my thing is, whenever I hear a song, I could remake that motherfucker on spot. I be the remix that it could be funny, silly, nasty, grotesque. But everything I hear, I'm automatically switching the words around. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quick to steal the melody and put my words in there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you can play anything. Lately, I've been listening to this... Uh, this Billy Jean joint, uh, this Michael Jackson type beat that uh, my man sent me in. I had a crazy remix for that, and the old lady heard me singing it, and she started laughing like, "You wild for that? It'll probably never come out, but that just what came to my mind immediately. You understand what I'm saying? Like, whatever comes to my mind immediately is what's gonna come out of my mouth. And you and feel as though, long as you like it, it's it's a hit. It's dope. 
as long as I you won't feel say it's a hit. I've never sold. I've never sold no no records in the professional capacity. I was always out of the trunk guy. I mean, a hit out of the trunk then. Something someone people want to hear, like like the rough and rowdy song on your page. Like, I mean, I wasn't going to even put that out. I'm glad you did. I, I wasn't though. This is what I'm saying. See now. Whether people know it or not, like you my man, like you my brother, like me and you, bro, we thick as thieves. We True. were the, the, the dinner thieves. True. When, you know, everybody else was claiming that they were dinner thieves. You understand what I'm saying? Clay scrapers. Like, 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 we were them guys for real, and you was like, you, you ain't had no problem with telling me something was whack or something was trash. So to hear that, you like something that was just a snippet. And I'm like, yo, I let you hear the whole verse last night. And you was like, yo, that's incredible. We need to go ahead and do that whole thing. Yeah, true. You feel me? That, that's not eye opening to me because I would have never let you hear it if I wasn't sure of it. So do you feel as though just because you rhyme and you feel yourself and you are dope that sometimes there could be people around that could either be negative towards the situation or, or of a song you're trying to do or just be a yes man towards it? You know, you have a lot of yes mans out here. Like LL said, people would just I, I, play you a beat and bob their head. Know, I know who to ask. How about that? Okay. And good. yes, I definitely know that it's a bunch of yes men. I know motherfuckers right now that want to piggyback off of my shit, but really ain't that. They really ain't. They really ain't that. They just want to piggyback off of my shit and make it seem like they on my level. Do you understand what I'm saying? True. But they really not. But it's not for me to tell them that. I'm telling the world this. So whenever y'all tune in, yeah, I know what y'all doing, and I'm not mad. Do your best. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm flattered that you would want to piggyback off of me. And you heard it right from the man's mouth. The world famous plenty. Sir. Um, thanks for sitting down with us. Payphone era. Streets raise me, we out.